Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, with you tonight for another half hour of scintillating libertarian conversation. And uh, we've got rather a special program tonight. We're, we're talking with the um, two leading candidates for the libertarian nomination for United States Senator from New York, uh, opposing the incumbent Hillary Clinton. Um, with me are um, Jeff Russell, a longtime libertarian activist from Clifton Park, New York, and Steve Greenfield, a well-known civil liberties and peace activist from New Paltz, New York. Um, both of them are vying for the libertarian nomination for U.S. Senate. I've spoken with both of them. They're both fine candidates. They do, however, have some differences, as is usual when two men are vying for the nomination. So we're going to find out a little about both of these fellows and what they stand for and how they differ. And uh, then when convention time rolls around, we'll know who to vote for. Uh, let's start with you, um, Jeff Russell. Yes. Um, tell me a little about why you are running for United States Senate and what your one key issue is. I'm running for Senate because I'm outraged at the position that Senator Clinton has taken on uh, mainly the war in Iraq, but also the Patriot Act and Homeland Security. And, and the one issue that I would focus on is the war in Iraq. Uh, she has voted in favor of it. I am totally opposed to it. And I would like to see our troops brought home as quickly as possible. Okay, thanks. And um, Steve Greenfield, same question. <laughs> Yes, uh, obviously this is one of the areas where we have a lot of agreement. I think this isn't just a matter of the Libertarian Party. I think uh, the nation as a whole is focused this year, as well they should be, on the matter of the war. Hillary Clinton voted for the war with more than enough information to know that that was an incorrect position to take. Uh, this position is, is harming America's security, it's bankrupting the Treasury, it's killing innocent people, uh, and she is unapologetic for the position she took and promising that she will continue to maintain that position and maintain the occupation. Uh, this is an issue for the nation as a whole, as we said, but it's also a key issue for the Libertarian Party itself, and I think we'll be able to discuss that as the program develops. Okay, and speaking of the Libertarian Party, I've noticed that uh, you two gentlemen have different strategies with regard to how you're going to conduct your campaign in the fall. Uh, you, Steve, are uh, planning to run on several different lines, uh, and you, Jeff, are planning to stick strictly to the libertarian line. Uh, Steve, I wonder if you could start by telling us, first of all, which different parties you hope to be nominated by and why you feel that strategy will be the most effective. Right. Okay. At the current moment, I'm, I'm in nomination in the Independence Party, the Libertarian Party, and the Green Party. I think that the Libertarian nomination is a long shot, and I put my name in there just to keep that covered in the hope that it could come through. We're really talking about um, a classic and incredibly newsworthy left-right coalition of the Libertarian Party and the Green Party is really the prime target for this race. And the reason that my strategy is designed around fusing those two parties is because this is one of those rare times in history when people from all areas of the political spectrum have sufficient common ground and common interest uh, to join together and really make a statement that neither one of them can make on their own because of the natural tendency for the, devote to, for the vote to split along issues that are lower down on the priority list than the key issues. We have an incredible opportunity this year uh, to get media attention and attention from the public that's never existed before. Uh, opportunities like this come uh, very rarely, if not once in a lifetime, and, and this is the year to do it. Okay, and uh, Jeff, you are running strictly on the Libertarian yes. Party line, and uh, why did you decide to uh, take that route? Well, uh, I've been a member of the Libertarian Party since 1980. In fact, ever since I found out about the existence of the Libertarian Party, uh, I've been a member. Although most Libertarians like to say uh, we've been Libertarians all our life and, and just didn't know it. Um, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Libertarian Party was the only party for me. Uh, I never considered uh, looking at the Democratic Party, Republican Party, or the Green Party. And tell our viewers, some of them may not be quite sure what Libertarianism means. Can you sum it up in words that uh, any third grader could understand? Okay. Uh, libertarian philosophy is based I on two things, uh, freedom and responsibility. Libertarians believe that individuals have the freedom to do anything they like as long as they don't interfere with the rights of other individuals. But libertarians also believe that people have a responsibility to be accountable for their actions so that if their actions result in, in harm to themselves or to someone else, 
those individuals must be held accountable for those actions and not ask the taxpayers or the government to bail them out. Okay. Um, Steve, um, you're not a registered libertarian or a member of the party, but um, you can, of course, be a libertarian without that. Do you consider yourself a, a libertarian? Yes, I do. Uh, libertarianism and the libertarian philosophy is, before it becomes a political party, it's a lifestyle. Um, and from the point that Jeff was just explaining, which of course is the classic definition of libertarianism, uh, personal freedom and personal responsibility combined together, that is a lifestyle choice as much as it is a political philosophy. And where it translates into politi political philosophy is the point where, uh, where policy starts being directed to facilitate this as a, uh, to ease this as a way of life, as access to this as a way of life for more and more people. Uh, so I certainly live a, a, a libertarian lifestyle. I've been an advocate for uh, protection of civil liberties uh, for quite a long time and a successful one at that, uh, and certainly live a lifestyle of high personal responsibility. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to give you fellows a theoretical because I think that uh, really, realistically speaking, whichever of you is nominated, the odds of your being elected to the Senate are uh, pretty small, mm -hmm. but just in case you were, um, can you tell me about uh, some of the um, other issues that you would uh, bring up during uh, the next six years aside from the war? I mean, obviously you would use the, your Senate seat as a bully pulpit to advocate, advocate against the war, but what are some of your other pet issues, uh, Steve? Okay, uh, the next one down after the war would be the uh, complete repeal of the USA Patriot Act, which unfortunately just got renewed with the help of Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer, uh, a bipartisan effort once again to repeal that act uh, and replace it with an act that enables law enforcement to have the communication tools that they need uh, to get their job done without actually intruding on our constitutionally guaranteed civil liberties. Those rules were created in times of danger for the purpose of being in force in times of danger. So the fact that people are using a time of danger as an excuse to set those civil liberties aside, I think, is against the American way of life. Um, I'd also like to see a complete end of all corporate welfare, our economic system on every level, from the individual level to the business level and everything in between, uh, is living on a, on a taxpayer umbilical cord right now, and we have to, we have to sever that uh, and restore uh, a free market operating model so that we can see exactly where we stand. Uh, I also want to um, insist that the United States government and its representatives be held to the same standards of personal responsibility that we were talking about that we all as individuals need to be held uh, accountable to. There have been grave crimes committed at the public expense uh, and on our watch over the last few years, and I'd like to see the individuals responsible for that held legally accountable as well as being thrown out of office. Okay, thanks. And uh, Jeff, do you have any other pet issues? Yes. Uh, I too am calling for the total repeal of the Patriot Act, a and like Steve, uh, I was once again amazed to see that both our senators, Senator Clinton and Senator Schumer, both supported the Patriot Act again. You were amazed? I sure as heck wasn't. <laughs> Well, considering all the screaming that they've been doing about it, I was uh, amazed that they would support it again. But, but other issues that I would like to focus on are the, the drug war. Um, anyone who knows anything about libertarians know how libertarians feel about the drug war. It's just a, a tremendous intrusion into our personal lives, something that the government has no business doing. It, it's breeding high crime. It, it's driving up the price of drugs, forcing addicts to steal to support their habits. Uh, driving up the crime rate. One thing that all libertarians would like to do is to see all of these drug laws eliminated, to take the profit out of it, to stop the, uh, the drug crimes that, that are occurring. Uh, another thing that I would like to focus on is reducing taxes. Steve brought up the point of reducing corporate welfare, and, and that has a lot to do with it. We, we have to reduce all these handouts that we're giving and, and bring the tax rate down, allow the American people to keep their money. Okay. Uh, Steve, how do you feel about uh, repealing governmental regulation of drugs? Oh, absolutely in favor of it. I've been a drug reform advocate uh, all my adult life. Um, most of these uh, laws are matters of private behavior, uh, not a matter of, um, of any kind of public interest in regulating that behavior, and certainly we see uh, the grave harm to society that's caused by the crime and the gangsterism that's related to the prohibition itself, a situation we last saw 
in the late 20s and early 1930s. And back then, government knew what to do, which was to repeal those prohibitions. Uh, and right now, we see a clear need for society to take that act again. Okay, and how about taxation? I think the standard libertarian position on taxation is that it's theft and that at the very best you could say that it's a, sometimes a necessary evil, but even that is debatable. Uh, what's your position on taxation? Should we uh, keep it all in place? Should we repeal all of it? Should we keep <laughs> some of it? We really have to repeal most of it. The fact of the matter is, is that most of the things that tax money is being spent on are unnecessary um, and, and not even properly the role of government. So we can certainly cut back enough government operations to return at least three quarters of the current federal budget to the taxpayer. I think, you know, that there are some elements that are the legitimate role of government. I mean, I'm a firefighter myself and I'm a volunteer firefighter, so we do that with the most limited amount of taxpayer support as possible, but I can't afford a $500,000 fire truck and we certainly need to be able to protect people's property. There are some areas where society collectivizes in its own, in its own interest and uh, so perhaps not all tax is theft. Um, some of it is essential, uh, but most of the, what we're spending right now is improperly used and must definitely be returned to the taxpayer. Okay, and speaking of the collective responsibility, um, Steve, I'd be curious to hear what the libertarian position, or at any rate, your libertarian position is on environmental issues. Should there be government regulation of the environment, and if so, how much? Well, uh, I believe that the best way to uh, control uh, pollution is through private property rights. Um, that if an individual owns property and some other individual uh, damages that property, the individual who owns it has a right to file a claim against the person who, who did the damage. It, it's just like with any other kind of damage. If someone damages your house or damages you physically, you have a right to take action against the person who has damaged you. Pollution is just a form of property damage. It, it's no different from someone coming to your yard and dumping their trash in your yard. If, if a polluter has pollutants that are coming onto your property and doing damage, then you have a right to take that polluter to court and sue that person. But uh, the government should not be getting involved in telling people what to do in terms of what they can do with their property or uh, things like that. Okay, now um, Steve, you're uh, running hopefully on the Green Party ticket as well. Would uh, Jeff's position be compatible with, uh, with the Green Party line? And uh, if not, uh, what would your mm -hmm. position on environmental issues be? The Green Party line is essentially the same. The matter of pollution is a matter of property. We've discussed this at, at uh, earlier conversations. The polluter is responsible when uh, operating their business to keep whatever it is they have within the confines of their own property. Uh, if they're not capable of doing that, then they shouldn't be operating. There, there become some administrative problems when you put the entire focus on, on legal uh, causes of action on lawsuits, on financial lawsuits, because essentially in some forms of pollution, once the science is established, uh, carcinogenic chemicals, things like that, that are not being contained on the property of the, of the polluter, uh, when somebody has cancer, there's no amount of financial compensation that's going to be able to take care of that. There's, there's, there's your body as well as the value of your property. I think that there are situations that once an environmental toxin is known to exist, that the science has been established, that um, there is a matter of crime, no different than street crime, no different than being mugged. If the polluter then ref uh, refuses to keep control over those uh, toxins, uh, aside from any financial lawsuits that could be brought in terms of damage to the individual who was harmed, uh, I think there can be criminal um, sanctions in that okay. situation as well. Okay, so uh, it sounds like you two fellows aren't too terribly far apart mm -hmm. on, uh, on these various issues. Uh, and I'm going to just break away for a quick moment okay. here to remind our viewers that if you want to know more about the Libertarian Party and about uh, Libertarian values and our stands on the issues, you can visit the website of the Manhattan Libertarian Party. That is www.manhattanlp.org. And there you will find not only essential information about the party, but um, links to um, the state um, website and the national website. Once again, that's www.manhattanlp.org. And um, now back to the fray, I would like to uh, just step away from the issues okay. for half a moment and give each of you um, a 
little time to tell us about your background, your um, family situation, if you wish, your educational background. Just uh, take a minute or so to tell us uh, whatever you think is most important. Jeff, we'll start with you. Okay, I'm 55 years old. I live in Clifton Park, New York. That's Saratoga County. I live there with my wife, two children, and my dog. Um, I've been a member of the Libertarian Party since 1980. I've uh, done a lot of things in the Libertarian Party over the year. I've been a chairman of the local chapter. I've been a member of the state committee. I've gone to the national conventions, um, done quite a bit. Um, I uh, worked uh, for 30 years as a computer programmer for the New York State Office for Technology. I am currently retired, and uh, this is my job now, out campaigning for United States Senate. Listen, if I could retire at 55, I, <laughs> I, I think I'd probably do something more fun than running for U.S. Senate, so I have to hand it to you for that. Um, Steve, tell us about yourself. Okay. I'm 44 years old. I live in New Paltz, New York. I was born and raised in New York City, and I moved to New Paltz five years ago to start my family. I'm a professional musician and have been since I graduated from college. I went to Columbia here in New York and got a degree in economics in 1982. I uh, started my activist career in uh, anti-militarist issues back at that time. Um, I was involved in the civil liberties fight here against Rudy Giuliani for many years. I, I, I brought several police misconduct cases, uh, two of them successful before I moved out of New Paltz, uh, excuse me, before I moved out of New York and moved to New Paltz. Uh, I've also run for office twice before in 2002. I ran for United States Congress against a very liberal congressman who had voted for the USA Patriot Act and did very well on a very limited budget and limited access in that race. I also ran for county legislature in Ulster County on the Green Party line with the cross endorsement of the, uh, of the Hudson Valley Libertarian Party at that time and managed to get 21 percent of the vote. It was a very successful fusion of the two parties. Uh, so we're just looking to build on that process now. Okay, so tell me what your senatorial campaign is going to look like this fall. Okay, well this is an important thing. I'm glad that we got to it because elections are different than the ordinary issue activism that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Elections are the point in the process where, where the message meets the mathematics. And so the strategy of how you design what you're doing, uh, the voting pools that you're aiming at, and what kind of results you could expect to receive are really the essence of electoral work as opposed to other kinds of activism. And so right now, you know, we already started a, a little while ago. We talked about the fact that I'm trying to form multiple parties that are sharing a lot of common ground on all of these issues uh, so as to maximize the voting draw that we could get. Um, I'm also tailoring my message, I don't mind saying this is an important thing to do when you're going into an election, is to study your opponent and seek out what her areas of vulnerability are. Uh, there are many areas where it seems to us as activists that she should be completely vulnerable, but the public is not paying attention to those issues or for whatever reasons considers her to be strong on those issues. My policy is to de-emphasize those issues. In most cases, you have at most 10 minutes to make your presentation. And the important thing to do is find one or two key Achilles heels that your opponent has and make sure that you're focusing all your resources on those issues. Uh, so that's the strategy of how I deliver my message. Okay. The importance of, of joining multiple parties together is really what I see as the best way to um, to attract media attention and to score the all-important thing that third parties can never get, which is an invitation to the debate. If we basically join together mm -hmm. and form as an anti-war civil liberties party, then we stand with strength on par with the two major parties and can make a strong case for that debate invitation. Okay, great. Now I'll get back to you in a bit about uh, Hillary's Achilles heels, but first, uh, mm -hmm. Jeff, uh, you take a couple of minutes now and tell me uh, what the Jeff Russell campaign is going to look like this fall. Okay. Well. Um, I'm planning to focus uh, my campaign on just getting out every day. Like I said, I'm retired. Um, one of the problems that all third-party candidates seem to have is that they're not professional politicians. Uh, almost all of them have jobs that they have to go to every day, and campaigning is really something that they have to squeeze in to just a few hours extra that they have every week. Since I don't have that problem, I'm hoping to be out every day campaigning somewhere. Specifically, um, uh, thinking of focusing on college campuses because I, I really think that that's where uh, the libertarian message will be received the best. And everyone keeps saying, well, college kids don't vote. Uh, and it's true, they don't vote as much as um, their, their older counterparts, but I think that percentage-wise, we have a much better chance of, of getting success with uh, 
college students than we do uh, with the older generation. So I'm hoping to hit as many college campuses as I, as I possibly can, uh, drum up not only votes, but also some volunteers to help out with the campaign. Okay, that's great. Now, um, I'd like to ask each of you uh, about where you think um, the incumbent candidate's chief vulnerabilities lie. Um, Steve, we'll start with you. The big ones are the ones that we've been talking about. They're the war and they're the USA Patriot Act. And to a lesser extent, there are questions of her extraordinary interest and capacity to hand out all kinds of, of tax money to all kinds of people for all kinds of reasons. The, the, main, the main Achilles heel, the, the place where you know you have to go constantly, is the question of the war. The war is getting worse. We knew it was going to get worse. We never should have gotten there in the first place. And Hillary is committed to staying there for as long as it needs to be, uh, as long as she needs to keep us there, for as many lives as it needs to cost, for as much treasury as it needs to cost. Um, and that's where you need to go with your focus. Uh, Patriot Act after that. Um, I also, you know, I'll let Jeff respond to this part of the question now, but I'd like to return to a question of, of strategy in a moment if we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I agree too. That I think that is her weakest point, is the, the war in Iraq and the Patriot Act. Uh, and that's why I chose to emphasize those issues. Those are certainly not the only issues um, I'm going to deal with, but uh, those are the ones that I tended to emphasize. Uh, one thing that uh, I am very concerned about is a return to a military draft, because uh, the, way, uh, the way the situation in the world is going today, I fully expect that there is a good chance that we will have a military draft again in this country. Now, my son is 14. My daughter is 12. Before this six-year term is up, they will both be of draft age, and I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see either one of them drafted to fight in some war that very few of the American people are supporting. A and I'm just very, very afraid that if it comes down to a vote for a draft, that Senator Clinton would be one of the first ones to vote in favor of it. Oh, I agree entirely. But uh, now, um, as uh, Steve suggested, let's get back to the issue of strategy. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Jeff, I'm going to start with mm -hmm. you on this one because you had mentioned that a lot of libertarians say that they always were libertarians, they just never realized they just never it. Realized it. Um, how can we, in the coming campaign, make more people realize that they are libertarians and that the Libertarian Party is and ought to be a, a viable alternative? Well, uh, I think TV shows like this for one, uh, I'm very impressed with the setup you have here. I, I've been watching previous, um, previous editions of this show on the internet, and uh, I think that this is one of the best ways to get the, the message out to people, just cable TV shows like this, the internet in general. And then, as I said, uh, I plan to be out there every single day and every single night trying to uh, communicate with as many people as I possibly can to bring the message to them. Okay, and Steve? Uh, very specifically, the question here that matters is access, and that is why the strategy that I'm seeking for this year's election is so key. What's going to get people to understand that there is a libertarian party that they can vote for is the opportunity to get that word libertarian out into as wide a circle uh, of the spectrum of the population as possible. And that means getting media attention. That means focusing your efforts on the activist groups that are already working on the issues that are central to this party. And that's where my strategy and my mechanisms for bringing that message to the public uh, differs considerably from Jeff's. And I think this is where the, the, the voters in the Libertarian Party are going are to find the crux of the matter. Um, I think that approaching college campuses is not a productive use of our time because college students are away during the summer and they can't help you do the petitioning. They go back to wherever they came from and, and they're simply unavailable. Uh, my efforts are going to be concentrated on the, the large and, and functioning groups all across the state of activists. Uh, in particular, those two groups are going to be the 50 communities in New York State that have already adopted Anti-Patriot Act resolutions, and I was uh, a key organizer for three of the first four resolutions that were brought in this state, and I'm going to use my unique access to those 50 groups uh, to bring this message of civil liberties uh, and peace to those 50 groups and to the communities that they're in contact with. Uh, also, there are about 20 cities and, and uh, municipalities in the state right now that have adopted anti-war resolutions already. In fact, uh, the town of New Paltz was the first to do that, and we did that before the war even started. So I'm going to use my access with those anti-war groups 
in those communities that have already been successful in bringing governmental resolutions against the, uh, the war and the Patriot Act and use them to spread the message as we get the media, as we score those debates from working from a position of strength, uh, that name libertarian is going to be on television screens outside the public access arena where it needs to be, and then you're going to see new membership coming forward. Okay. And, um, Jeff, I'd like to ask mm -hmm. you if, um, if you get into a um, televised debate with the other senatorial candidates, which seems to me uh, we might pull that off if we know how to work it, um, how would you um, convince viewers that um, neither the Democrat nor the uh, Republican uh, candidate was uh, proper for the uh, for the job, and uh, that uh, they ought to take the third party alternative. How do you how do you tell them that they're not wasting their vote? Uh, I w I would tell the voters to look at the records of the the senators that we have now, and ask themselves do do they agree with what these senators are doing or do they disagree? And if you disagree with what the senator is doing, then vote that senator out. If you disagree with what any politician is doing. Don't sit around and complain about it and, and talk to your friends and, and things like that. The, the time to do your complaining is in the voting booth on Election Day. That's the only thing that politicians understand. As long as they know that people are going to go out there and vote for them, they'll keep doing the things that they're doing. It, it's only when they see a, a large percentage of the people starting to turn away from them and go towards third parties that they'll start to question what they're doing and maybe change what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we've got to wrap up here, I'm afraid, but um, I think that both of you have stated your cases really well, and I think you're both, um, either of you would uh, do credit to the Libertarian ticket, and so um, I'm just going to wish you both um, the very best of luck in your campaign, and whichever of you is nominated by the Libertarian Party, I uh, hope that um, you will actually go out there and open a can of whoop ass. So uh, <laughs> for uh, for now, we'll just uh, may we give our websites um, real quick. Okay, www.greenfieldforsenate.org, and I'm russellforsenate.org. Okay, and once again, it's um, Jeff Russell, longtime libertarian activist from Clifton Park, and Steve Greenfield, civil liberties and peace activist from New Paltz, New York. Thank you Thank both, you. gentlemen and best of luck to both of you. Thank you. And tune in next week for another edition of Hardfire. I'm Joseph Dobrian. Good night and good luck. <laughs>